Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from C Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Classic Album War. Today, we're going to look at two really important albums in the kind of rebirth of progressive rock in the uh, early 90s, okay? So this was a, a decade where, you know, you had a lot of the hard rock and metal of the 80s kind of going a little bit underground, okay? Grunge and alternative is all the rage, right? Uh, but all of a sudden, you started to see progressive rock bands starting to pop up all over the place. Either the older bands putting out new music, or more importantly, a lot of young bands who were influenced by the greats of the 70s and the early 80s, kind of just all of a sudden popping up out of nowhere and really starting to kind of turn a lot of people's heads. And this was also a time period where I really started to get into prog heavily, okay, between rediscovering a lot of the older bands as well as getting into some of the new ones. So two of the ones that I discover right off the bat along with Spock's Beer and the Flower Kings, which we discussed about in a prior episode, was uh, Ekelin from Pennsylvania here in the U.S. and Sweden's Anglogard. So the two battles we're going to have today, or the battle we're going to have today, is Anglogard's debut, Hybris, from 1992. There's the band right there. Okay. And then Ekelin as the World, okay, which was their major label debut on Sony, believe it or not. Yes. A prog band signed to a major label. Okay, so these guys, I believe this was their uh, Suffocating the Balloon came before. That was a full length. So they had a self-title and they had uh, another another EP. So I guess this is technically their second full length. Okay, but they've had they had a couple other you know releases prior to this. So let's one at a time here. So let's go back to the oldest one. So this is from 92. So these bands kind of came, this band kind of came out of nowhere, a mostly instrumental band. They did have some vocals, which they sang in, in Swedish. Okay. But just think of it as like another instrument. So these guys, you know, they had classic keyboards. Okay. Hammond organ, Mellotron, Moog, electric piano, all the usual suspects, right? You had flute, you had Rickenbacker bass, you had acoustic guitar, electric guitar, fantastic stuff. I think this band was probably, if you were to talk about their influences, definitely King Crimson, definitely vintage, like Peter Gabriel era Genesis, a little bit of Jethro Tull, a little bit of Van de Graaff Generator, okay? You don't hear so much like ELP or Yes in their music, more of those other more pastoral bands. And these guys would go from like little kind of classical kind of rave ups to full blown symphonic prog rock, but very pastoral and, and um, orchestral in nature. They had a folky flavor going through their music. And I love the way they kind of weave the guitars with the flute and uh, the lead bass work, okay, and then the waves of, of uh, Mellotron. And all the other different kind of keyboards, and you know, again, a lot of the some these are all in Swedish. You know, Jordrock, uh, Vandergar, I Vissen, Vissenhet. I don't know how to say any of these things. Kungbor, uh, Ifran, Glarhet, Till, Klarhet. You know, I don't know how you say any of these, uh, but it doesn't matter because it's just you. Once you hear these songs, you never forget them, and just instrumental, instrumentally brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. And these guys sparked a whole new wave, I think, of Scandinavian bands that say, hey, it's cool to play prog rock again, guys. You know, a fantastic, fantastic album. They will release another solo album, another studio album, I should say, and then a live album, which was recorded, I believe, at Prague Fest? No, Prague West. There was a Prague Festival out on the West Coast that Greg Walker from Symphonic Music, I think, spearheaded. And I think that their live album was recorded there. Uh, and then they disappeared for like a million years and eventually reformed played at Nearfest, uh, one of the Nearfest that I attended, and have put out another uh, studio album since then, uh, but they've been kind of quiet again for a bit. So, but a great, great album, great debut. And then you got this one, As the World. So, a little, a different beast. Eklund from Pennsylvania, a bunch of guys who loved uh, all the 70s prog rock, uh, especially, you know, Genesis, Gentle Giant, big Gentle Giant fans, a little bit of Yes. Uh, the music of Gentle Giant kind of runs all through their, their stuff from the, the use of Counterpoint, in their arrangements, the quirky nature of some of the, the song structures, all right, great vocals, intricate guitar and keyboards, you know, Christopher Busby on guitar, uh, who else we got here, Brett Cull, right, Christopher Busby on keyboards, Tom Hyatt on bass, Brett Cull on guitar, lead and backing vocals, Paul Ramsey on drums, and Ray Weston on lead and backing vocals. Uh, Ray would also play bass on later releases. These guys have been fairly prolific over the years. They have a lot of albums under their belt, but this one got them, you know, they're, they're, the uh, Suffocating the Bloom album got them noticed, 
I believe how it worked uh, is they put out a demo for this. Sony picked them up because there was a lot of buzz about the Suffocating the Bloom album. And this came out, a great album, some great songs on here. You know, the title track, uh, The Cheese Stands Alone. What else we got on here? My Dear Wormwood is fantastic. Uh, Settle Land. There's a little cool little instrumental bits. The Wiblet is really cool. Never the Same is fantastic. A lot of catchy harmonies, though. So whereas this was mostly all instrumental and pretty demanding music, this, as challenging as the music was, had a little pop edge to it. Okay, had like a, an accessible nature to it, which was always really endearing about Echolin. Their, their music was always very listenable. And I got all the dogs out here with me now. Say hi, dogs. Hey. Tala and Nuka are here. Um, so the show is all about putting two albums together, right? So which one is my favorite? So this is a really hard one because I love these albums a lot. I love these bands a lot. And you really, you cannot go wrong with either of these. Trust me when I tell you that. So if you're someone who's watching this show and you're really only big on the bands from the 70s and you haven't listened to any of the 90s and, and post-90s stuff, you really need to investigate these albums or anything by either band in their catalogs. Okay, but we're going to put them head to head. So I'm going to give the edge ever so slightly to Anglogard, Hybris, okay? This is a tough one because, you know, any day, you, like I said, you cannot go wrong with either of these. They are both legendary 90s prog albums. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw that term out there. Mandatory, essential 90s prog albums. But I think just from a pure, God, the, the, the complex and intricate and just mind-blowing nature of some of the compositions on this is going to eke it out ever so slightly. This is going to be a split decision, 115-114, 114, 114, 115, 114. Split decision, ever so close. Uh, but today I'm going to give the winner to Anglogard Hybris. But man, what a spirited battle up to the end from Echolens as the world dynamite album. You know, the sad thing about this is that, you know, I don't think Sony knew what to do with these guys. They didn't market this. You know, they released this on their label, and they, the, the world was like, oh, cool, prog band on a major label. Great. And then before you knew it, they, the, the, the deal was done, and... They would have to go and self-release their all their albums after that once again. So uh, it's just a perfect example of a of a weird decade in music, where I don't think labels really knew what was sticking, what was what was hot. You know, you had alternative and grunge, and then new metal, and then rap, and all this kind of stuff. And there was, it was a really weird decade. And I think if if Eklund came were out like ten years prior, uh, might have been a different story. But who knows, right? Who knows? So, but yeah, check them both out if you haven't. Anglogard, Hybris, Eklund, As the World. They're both absolute winners, in my opinion. Curious to see what you guys think. Uh, go onto our Facebook page. There's actually a poll on these two right now. Go and head to head. Go and cast your vote. This is on the web at www.catranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're on Mighty YouTube. Off and off and off. I'm going to be a little quiet for a couple days. Going to be up in Boston, Massachusetts on a, a couple-day business trip, but I'll be back uh, midweek, and we'll have some stuff later in the week. Also, Thursday night, this coming Thursday, which is, what, the 27th, I will be at Bethel Woods seeing the, I don't know what the tour is called, but it's Yes and Asia, John Lodge from the Moody Blues, and Carl Palmer's ELP Experience, whatever the hell it's called. Uh, so if you're going to be in Bethel Woods checking that show out, hope to run into you, all right? But I'll be doing a live um, kind of video, uh, live show review probably the following morning, let you know how it turned out. So if I run into any of you there, you know, be on the lookout for me. I'll be, uh, I'll be there under the pavilion with the rest of you, and I uh, hope to see you then. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.